I'm Lisa DeSantis. I am the Vice Commodore of Columbia Yacht Club, and I wanted to share my story with you about my venture from buying a boat and bringing it from Cleveland, Ohio to Chicago. Um, I know it, it seems daunting, it did to me, but I want to share my experience and let people know it's doable, especially if you have the right crew and it really is not as daunting as you think it is. So this is my story. Well, I didn't consider Cleveland at first. I was looking around Lake Michigan because that's what we do, because that's what most of us know and are comfortable with. But then this opportunity came, uh, Dave Hardy's good friend, uh, the, and his wife were selling their boat and it happened to be in Cleveland on the Rocky River at Cleveland Yachting Club and uh, that's how it came to be. Um, I knew his friend, um, I knew it was going to be a great boat and that's how it all started. I, I just knew it was something to look into seriously and and my, my way of thinking about just compartmentalizing my search in Lake Michigan just went out the window and that's why I just decided to, why not look at Cleveland? Um, so once I decided on the crew and asked them and they agreed, um, which were very essential in this decision, and that would be Dave Hardy, Bob Horenkamp and Mark Schneider, and once I knew I had them by my side, it, it was extremely, it was a no brainer. It was just really easy decision. And I knew I would have the support and help. And that's what finalized my decision on purchasing this boat and knowing I can bring it over safely. So now you've got prep work to go to, before you even leave Chicago to get to the boat. So it was a matter of how are we going to get there? What am I going to bring? What do we need for the journey? So the first thing was just getting us there. That was, I didn't want to, I didn't want to plan too much, but just getting us there. So I rented, I was going to rent an SUV and realized very quickly when I was making my lists, <laughs> as far as what to bring that I would need a huge minivan, which I never thought in a million years that I'd be driving a minivan, but that's what we did. Got a minivan, rented that, and then drove over to Cleveland. And it was packed full. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, but that once we got there and we provisioned properly, then we cast lines and set sail and we weren't really sure what harvest i mean obviously we looked at maps we knew where we could stop but we weren't certain we just wanted to kind of make a vacation out of it and that's what we did before we left we knew it was about 750 miles three great lakes two rivers one small lake and not really certain how many ports we were gonna go but it turned out to be 18 ports total the journey ended up to be three weeks, exactly. So we were able to work from the boat uh, because we stayed close enough to shore, which was really convenient because three weeks, we you know, if you're, unless you're retired, it's a long time to take off. So we were able to work and use hotspot because we were close enough to shore and it was really easy. There was no hiccups with that. And we were also able to drop off crew and pick up crew along the way. And it was very easy. Um, the first crew member was, well, it was me, Dave Hardy and Bob Horncramp. And we picked him. He came with us uh, in the car and then we dropped him off at Port Huron after five or six days. I can't remember. Um, Port Huron, what I didn't realize, and he did the research, has an Amtrak train that runs from Port Huron to Chicago every day. So we just needed to be, that was our only, where we needed to be somewhere at a certain time and it, there was no stress. 
Um, we needed him to get that train at six o'clock in the morning in Port Huron. So that was on a Friday. So we were at Port Huron Thursday night. That was our only, we have to be there. But other than that, then we were able to pick up other crew, uh, another crew member, Mark Schneider. And um, it was really easy. It's easier than you think. It was Dave and I uh, the whole time. And then it was Bob the first week. And then Mark, we picked him up, dropped him off, picked him up, dropped him off. So we, uh, you know, we had three people on the boat most of the time. I think. Well, if anybody is interested in being crew on somebody who's delivering a boat this distance, um, it is very doable uh, because uh, if you, when you stay close enough to shore, you can work from the boat through hotspot. Um, I would encourage you to do it, uh, especially even if you don't have if you don't have the time off, you can work from the boat, and it's just easy access to using the train system from Chicago to through Michigan and to Port Huron. So it really is. So do the research. It's easier than you think. So during our journey, we stopped at several ports and the sailing community is, was just absolutely incredible. Uh, it was so early in the season that when I would call to find out if they had slips, they would laugh at me. So it was pretty funny. And then they just welcomed us when we got there because there was nobody else around. So that was fun. I think the most memorable uh, stop port was Bayview Yacht Club. When we got there, it just so happened that, first of all, they welcomed us with open arms, naturally. And then um, Bob had to he wound up helping the guy who was barbecuing outside fix his barbecue and then while he was doing that um we started talking to the maintenance guys and we realized that we needed a batter board and for those of you those of you who do not know what a batter board is on this side of the lake in lake michigan we have slips so it's a non-issue, but on that side of the lake, or even in Lake Erie and Lake Huron, they have pylons. So you need a board that goes between the uh, fenders and the pylons uh, to protect your boat. So we realized that we needed it and we talked about it and the maintenance guy said, oh, you need a batter board? Sure. So they went and found up a piece of wood and drilled holes in it so we can put line in it and attach it to our lifelines. And that was a savior throughout the entire journey. Uh, so, and that's the exact experience we got in every single port we went to open arms everybody was just happy to see us and meet us and we were happy to meet them and talk to people and meet people and it's just a great community my favorite spots i would say would be presqu'ile uh beautiful lighthouses great experience um and drummond island is up in the georgian bay um and uh, Beaver Island, also a great spot. The first time I visited Beaver Island, I remember thinking there's an island on a lake on an island on a lake. So it's, it's quite unique. So if you get a chance, go, go check it out and make sure that you have Navionics or you have a good GPS system. Because what we found out um, is, first of all, Lake Erie is quite shallow. Um, and when I say shallow, I'm talking 30 feet and whatnot, but you still have, it's a lot more shallow than what we're used to here in Lake Michigan. Um, rivers, you have to pay attention to. And when we found out through the rivers that the charts that I had on my GPS, um, they didn't work when we were on the Canadian side. So if you're going to do this trip, make sure you get charts that both have Canadian charts and US charts. So we always knew when we were in Canada because the charts would just disappear. So 
um, that's something to consider. So after we left Beaver Island, our next destination was Leland. Of course, you got to stop at Leland because you need to get the chatter. Uh, so um, at the Cove. So that's just a tradition. And not only did we get the chowder, we brought quartz back. So we enjoyed it along the way. So it was yummy. Um, and then we went down, we finished our course going down the east coast of Lake Michigan. So we crossed from South Haven back home to Chicago. And as we most people watching this may have encountered, uh, it's a great feeling to see the city skyline and it's just because it's a beautiful city um, and just coming back and docking and people seeing us and waving and so excited to see us because they knew about this journey because I posted it on Facebook. It was just nice to have such an incredible welcome home and that's because of the club and the community and the sailing community and it's it's just it's my family it's my home away from home i'm from new york i have no family here so this has just been an incredible experience and this was even over and above so i want to thank everybody for welcoming me home welcoming us home and uh for all the support it's very much so for anybody who is considering this or has needs any help in any way shape or form as far as uh, my experience and what I can help you with and bringing the boat over and any any advice I've taken a lot of notes I know who to contact in the ports I have all the information I'd be more than happy to help so please contact me or but it, it seems daunting but it, it is it, it's really not because it will open up your mind when you're looking for boats uh, it'll open your your search pattern you know you'll have more boats to look at and more opportunities to find the gem as I did I'm, I'm, I'm deeply blessed and I want to thank again my crew which consisted again of Dave Hardy Bob Horenkamp and Mark Schneider thank you so much for making this experience incredible and I will never forget it love you all what I also um, want to say is a special thanks to Bob Horenkamp's wife, Fiona, and his daughter, Quinn, uh, for allowing me to borrow their dad and husband for a week. And also a special thanks to Nikki Schneider, Mark's wife, for driving him all over Michigan to, to uh, be crew uh, on phase three. And, you know, it's just, it goes beyond the crew that's actually on the boat. So thank you, ladies, all of you for allowing me to borrow your husbands <laughs> to um, help me in this journey.